Hello there, welcome to Oiz Garage. I'm standing here next to a Megane RS uh, Generation 4, which is quite a cool car, I must say. Uh, but it's not my car, it's borrowed by a friend. <laughs> but uh, why am I standing here next to this thing? Um, you know, sometimes you're dreaming, looking at ads uh, on the internet and, well, Megane RS4, maybe I should upgrade the number or Model 3 to a Model 4, let's say, like that. Uh, so you look at ads and you dream of, you know, all sorts of cars. But very often I see photos of the cars there on the ads that are so, so rubbish, so crappy. So I thought, why not give you all a crash course in car photography? Um, it isn't all that difficult to do the basic things right. Of course, it's one thing to be in the really elite division to do super professional photos but to take to take decent photos that's not all that difficult and you can even do it with with you know even an old phone you can take decent photos with and if you have something a bit more modern with kind of more cameras than you can count then you can uh, you can achieve something really good then of course if you want to take a real professional photo then go shopping this thing it's the Nikon Z9 with a decent lens as you can see and this piece is quite rare i must say it's you know can i think one drops in into the uk per month now it's it's something quite special um, so uh, yeah we'll play a bit with this one also but um, it's mainly now about what to think about when you take photos for your car ad now sometimes i just see that the car stands outside the garage or on the street and it's just been washed and there's water dripping and uh, the guy just walks around the car with the phone like that and the angles are just awful and it's against the sun and it's so let's start with the basics then um, and i would also say that think about the number of photos that you take because at least around here it's not so that you can just put in as many photos as you, as you want. You can maybe get in six photos or something. Depends on the provider of the in that advertisement service. Um, so the first picture I would take is like this. Kind of three quarters view from the front or whatever you call it. So you see the front a bit like this and you see the side and then so when you, have, when you have the car in this position, second thing to think about, or even before you get it here, is that where is the sun? Now here the sun comes and goes, but the sun should always be behind you. Okay, sometimes you want to do some artistic photography, but that's not the case now. It's a basic ad. So the sun should always be behind you, not behind the car, because it does make a difference. Um, so, in this position, I would take the first photo. And now it depends on what, <coughs> what kind of camera you have. Quite often I see, I see photos, well, I shouldn't laugh because it's, you know, if one isn't into it, then it's not, maybe not so easy to understand. But um, quite often I see images that look like this. Super wide angle and the car is just not simply filling the frame at all. Now with this kind of camera or phone, I should say, you can, of course, try to get closer and closer, and that was too much. So then you take this one, unless you can walk further away or you get it a bit closer. But in general, I would say that take a photo the furthest away that you can within reasonable limits. So I will walk behind the camera right now just to to see how it will look. So now I'm quite well behind the car and of course you can see my camera in the middle of the image but that's not really the point right now. And then I take a photo like that. So you see here I filled up the frame as much as I can and the sun is in the right position. Now then as a second image I would not walk then just around the <laughs> walk around the car and take a photo from over here because then everything is in the shadow the sun is hitting the lens 
and the image will just look kind of crap. I will try to make an example. Well, it's doable, of course, to take an image like this, but it's not giving, uh, you know, the right, right light and the right appearance of the car. Now, I would move the car, of course. So, yes, it's a bit of a hassle sometimes if you're in a hurry, but don't be in a hurry and move the car so you get the right, right angle and right light on the car. Now, before, <clears throat> before turning the car around, I would take something that is a bit special of, of the car or the vehicle that you're about to take a photo of. And of course, on a uh, RS, <laughs> let me see now, ah, heavy stuff. Uh, on an RS like this, and it's even the Trophy model, uh, well, it's got pretty decent brakes. Uh, some kind of ventilated discs that are a bit special and uh, it looks like it has four piston Brembo brakes so it's pretty decent and some cool Bridgestone R tires I think it is there's not much thread <laughs> so um, and then just try to not to cover the image with uh, shade Like that. Good. Now, time to turn the car around. Okay, so you can see. Easy thing, just move the car. Sun is still there. So let's take a photo then. Let's see now. Zoom in a bit. Oh, that's too much. I will have to walk a bit away from from the car to fill the frame in a good way. Let's see. Am I getting into something? No. There we have it. My camera is in the way, but that doesn't matter right now. Now, with this pretty cool camera, uh, you have to walk quite a bit because it's at it's between 270 millimeters, so you have to be quite far away. Yeah, let's say that you have a normal camera with a more normal lens maybe a kit lens of 18 to 55 millimeters then it's another thing then always go for the highest number here so let's say that you have 55 as the highest number or 70 or something then choose that and walk now here it's a bit extreme it's between 70 and 200 so I might not be able to walk all the way to reach a decent filling of the frame at 200 millimeters but still and with this lens you have quite a wide or open aperture so you can kind of blur the background in quite a nice way that's kind of tricky with the phone unless you have some digital feature in the phone as such so let's see let's compare so now we have two exterior photos and if that's kind of the budget that you have for uh, exterior photos when you're going to do your ad then choose these two angles i would recommend them uh, of course if you have plenty of uh, of uh, room for having lots of images in the ad then yeah take more but again sun behind you not behind the car choose the narrowest lens that you can of course and fill the frame three basic things uh, now i would typically recommend an image or two from or an image or a photo or two from the of the interior of the car and if it's a car like this it's always a bit interesting to show what's the engine compartment like um, if it's an older car of course it's nice to show that you have a clean and reasonably well looking powertrain let's say like that so but doing that in the sun is never a good idea so unless you have access to do extra lighting and so on which almost no one uh, has of course then take the car into the shadow instead and over there, next to the tree, there is a consistent shadow. The sun comes and goes. So we'll just move the car 50 meters that way. Yeah. 
So we're in a good shadow. The light of over the engine is nice and smooth in a way. So let's just take an image and or a photo and then try to go as as high as one can, <laughs> I would say. Something as basic as this. Fine. Good. Then the interior. Let's take a closer look inside. Putting it at the most wide angle perspective, then we have a decent catch of getting a lot of interior in the, uh, the photo. also uh, get into the back seat. This new generation of uh, Megane uh, RS has uh, these uh, tire loading units at the rear, so one can get in here also. We got two exterior, at least two interior, the engine area, and then what is a bit difficult but it's worth a try is to take a photo as the car is moving so you get some hopefully motion blur on the wheels and behind the car and so on. Taking that with a phone though is not easy, but give it a try and we will give it a try. Or let's say like this, I will give it a try now, right? This camera is so advanced so that it will even recognize the car as it comes into the uh, viewing area of the lens. And I will just let the camera go now and follow. That's cool, <laughs> what a camera. <laughs> Let's see when it comes back. Whoa. Now, let's try to do this with a phone camera and see the difference. Now, doing this with a phone. Well, let's see. Here it comes. Okay, so I managed to get two shots as, as the car passed by. All right, good. So I hope you found this crash course in uh, car photography interesting. Uh, that's all from Oiskerov today. Take care, bye-bye.